Hello and welcome to the new video. This time what you see in, in the background is me playing our cultist custom create um, vortex build. Now let me give you a fair warning before you start you know deciding should you play this build or not. Since you're gonna be casting five uh, vortexes all the time this the screen sometimes is gonna look like a flashbang you absolutely will see nothing and sometimes I'm just dying to random um, you know things on the on the map because I cannot see it because simply that's how many vortexes I'm spamming constantly and you can see that in this uh, short clip of me playing uh, some kind of random map but um, in like in a boss fights and you're gonna see that when I'm gonna be doing invitation of the L Elder Slayers, it's far, far worse. So have that in mind, like, you know, the flashbang is there. And you can even make it worse, worse if you want. You can put the MTX with laughing is like Shaper. So you're gonna leave like small celestial vortex pulls. And this pretty much covers the full screen and you cannot see anything. So if you're wondering how's the damage and, and the defense of this build, let's start with the damage. If I'm counting that the enemy stands on the, the bottle fate consecrated ground, I'm have, the damage is around 20 mils. And you can see that in the boss clips that, you know, that actually, you know, the boss, the, the, the fights get, you know, relatively very easy and they die very quickly. About the defense, I would say the defense is very average. I mean, you're not going to be dying too often. I mean, you will die because of the more or less the flashbangs on the screen, rather that the build cannot handle couple, you know, uh, you know, you know things that's going into your way. It's more like it's gonna be there's gonna be pull of the vortexes and there's gonna be some kind of detonate dead, and then you're gonna be oh, what did you kill me? I'm like oh, you didn't see the detonate dead because your vortex was blocking, and that's in my opinion the huge part of like you know. Um, the defense when the, this build struggles a little bit but as long as you're gonna be moving and you know the cyclone actually plays around with this playstyle very well there's not much of a problem but you know and now we're probably gonna wondering should you actually play this build I would say if you don't mind the flashbang or of the of the vortexes as this is a very important thing that you're fully aware and you're watching what's happening on the screen that there is a bunch of vortexes blocking pretty much full screen that you cannot see anything then yeah the build feels very good because you know it, the damage is like absolutely over there so while i was live streaming i tried to gather as much of different content as i could such as like shaper fights some guardians some simulacrum and so on because people uh, most, most of the time ask what different content can the build can handle and so on and probably one of the questions that's gonna happen can this build do t17 and i would say like this the damage is there i can dodge the mechanics if i can see them i tried it one time the tier 17 as um map sanctum that's the the most easiest one in my opinion and i actually couldn't do it because i had to fight with the one of the bosses and i couldn't dodge the lithium mechanic because you know it's simply i couldn't see it so that's like you know a hu huge part of the, of the build so if if you if your thing would be like oh i want to farm mainly t17 so maps this is not the build for you there is like way too much flashbang happening on the screen i would say Long-awaited adventures is finally here. Availing safety and security. Twin 
So this is the wave 29 when I actually failed the simulacrum and I did not progress. So if you are wondering how far you can go with the, the build on the simulacrum, I, I attempted this twice and I got to wave, to wave 29 and 28. So if you're looking for a build that can do wave 30 simulacrum, that's not might be, the build might not be for you. The bandages that I took is to help Alira. Uh, Alira is actually great for any, you know, crit build as it provides a lot of like, you know, good stats. The Pantheon choice, you have a little bit of flexibility. This really comes down, did you manage to cap yourself at the Chaos Resistance or not? Because the choices becomes between Ara Soul of Arakali if you're struggling for the Chaos Resistance or um, you can use Soul of Lunaris. If you want the extra physical damage reduction and you have and you'd already capped your chaos resistance so the choice is between them two depending on your chaos resistance now for the minor go for the minor god i'm using sort of aberrant because i'm doing the red altars and there's a lot of burning ground so you want to have immunity for that but there is another possibility is this one sort of grukhul garukhan sorry so you cannot be blind it's not necessary that enemies are blinding quite often, but sometimes they're gonna blind you and you might have like issues with triggering um, your, your custom, com custom crit combo. Well, I wouldn't be bothered too much, but that's a possibility. I would just stick with the uh, Soul of Aberrant because, you know, it gives you like, you know, a way to deal with the Ignite and the Burning Grind is very annoying for any energy shield base build. If you want to have a full overview of the of the passive tree, refer to the POB. Otherwise, in here, in this uh, part of section of the video, I'm just gonna walk you through what things you should be looking for in the build. The first one is Unnatural Instinct over here, gives me a bunch of stats over here that I need. That I need. And you want to go from the spell damage, because Unnatural Instinct works like. If you allocate those two nodes, they don't work, but everything else that's around this section is not allocated, easy, you're gonna get a bunch of bonuses start from here. That's why I'm taking advantage of this attack speed that I need. Now, moving on over here, I have a, myself a Militant Fate, a Dominus, so I can get extra damage per power charge 
over here it's, that's converting um, the keystone now while you're gonna be buying the militant fate over here I would advise you to like copy and paste you know pretty much the militant fate because otherwise you might encounter that you're gonna try um, to buy a militant fate without checking it and what's what's gonna happen one of those passive might change to some like over here and then you're gonna be oh oh my oh my god what happened and then you're gonna try to resell the the you know the militant fate so what i would say is just test it out see if the militant fate is good in this position now otherwise the passive tree is a very generic crit custom crit crit base you know tree there's not much happening the only thing that you might be wondering why are those purple notes they are pretty much reduced cures effect with the combination of my flask this gives me a hundred percent chance and i have three over here one over here and have four over here now flask the diamond flask that i'm using i have a mod that that says um, a chance to gain flask when you did critical strike uh, this pretty much makes that the diamond flask is up pretty much all the time and the suffix that i have is the increase um, I mean reduce effect of curses during the flask effect this helps me out you know dealing with the curses and I have a couple of tattoos if you go back to the passive uh, tree section you can see that and on the four flask that I have not counting the unique one I, I craft myself the, uh, the mod from the bench use when the charges reach full so this pretty much automates the flask the next one is you gain free charges when you hit by the enemy in corrupting blood and I have this on topaz, so you can have this on a, rub on, on a ruby, on a sapphire, you know, you can play around a little bit over here. Then I have the same thing on my grand flask, gain, gain, gain charges, increase armor. Then I have a ruby with the ignite and burning immunity. At this point I didn't, I didn't have like too much of, you know, idea what to do, but I just went with the ignite. I'm still using the minor pantheon, so this is not that important so you could actually drop down the burning um, I mean the ignite and burning immunity for something else if, if you choose to the last flask that I'm using is bottle fight this just gives me a little bit extra damage um, on the rare enemies since probably the bottle fight is gonna be very expensive there's an alternative flask that you can um, see on the screen it's as there it's promise and the only role that you're trying to get is to gain X amount of percent elemental damage as extra chaos damage during the flask. The rest of them are not that important. The Atsiri Promise will give you a little bit extra damage. Obviously, the Atsiri Promise is not like bottle fight compared to damage, but it only costs fraction of the cost. <laughs> so for the belt, you're gonna have two possibilities. The first one, the cheaper one, you're gonna have to buy yourself a belt that has 14% increase cooldown recovery. That's the bare minimum. You cannot get lower. It has to be 14%. And then other bunch of random stats that you can get, like you know, resistance and flat energy shield and whatever else you can get. If you get yourself um, this cheaper belt, it means you can you're gonna be using the uh, the normal custom crit. But for example, if you already own or, or you're gonna be buying awakened custom crit then you can craft yourself a much more uh, better build with the crusader influence when you're gonna have like a you know a crystal belt base and you're gonna have more energy shield you're gonna have increased energy shield and so on but this belt is only uh, good and you should only have this belt if you can have the awakened custom crate if you cannot buy awakened custom crate this is the, your only option, that you need the cooldown recovery and then you're using the normal custom crit. The main weapon I'm using is Cosprey Smileys, simply because I need to trigger <clears throat> my frostballs somehow. Now, when you're gonna be buying Cosprey, um, the roles that you should be looking is this. Increase attack speed, it depends how you're gonna balance your attack speed. Sometimes you might uh, not necessarily want the the enchantment that I have with the increased attack speed or even to have a maximum increased attack speed in the in the cosplay. You have to balance that with the POB because you know everyone's gonna have a little bit different situation. So 
keep an eye on that. Another stat on the Cosprey, you know, if you get some kind of decent flat damage to the spell damage, that's great. And you know, that's, you know, there's not much uh, science in the Cosprey. And the gems that you're gonna be keeping in the Cosprey is gonna be Frostbolt, because you need to trigger your um, Vortexes from the Frostbolt. The next thing is gonna be Greater Volley, or you could use GMP, because you need the four extra projectiles. And now, which one is better or which one should you use? Uh, in my opinion, both of them are great. You know, obviously the volley is just gonna be shooting the projectile in a nice straight line, but the GMP is gonna be spreading them a little bit. So play around with them too and see which one is better for you and just, you know, stick with that. Or you can always, you know, swap around if you want. And the last gem that you're gonna be using is the power charge on critical strike because you need to generate power charges somehow that's uh, when the frost ball frost bolt uh, kicks in because it's just a, like a utility setup now for the shield that i'm using i'm using prism guardian and there's a couple possibilities what you can do with the prince guardian you could actually corrupt uh, the prince guardian if you don't need the implicit for the resistance and get some kind of plus two socketed games and other things that you could do Nonetheless, the implicit in the Prince Guardian is quite good. If you need the resistance, then you know just keep it as it is. Now you're gonna be keeping three auras, the three big auras in your Prince Guardian. This one's gonna be hatred, zealotry, and purity of elements. Make sure the purity of elements has a quality, because you're gonna get extra resistance because of that. Now you're probably gonna socket all those three auras like that. And then you wanna bam bam and you cannot you know use the the third one and what's happening now you need to do two things right now the first one you need to go over here on the mastery on the reservation mastery and you need to click the increase life reservation uh, mastery that's step number one step number two you need to get yourself an implicit for the like you know it's gonna be implicit on the corrupted jewel with the increased reservation efficacy of skills it has to be the, exactly this wording because this wording applies to life and mana as well once you have this jewel and this mastery then you, you will be able to use your last aura from your prism guardian so the helmet that i'm using is very this way and over overall this helmet is one of the better helmets that you can have as it provides you with a huge amount of defense. And I'm using a blue ring my left slot, so I get no critical damage. On top of that, my helmet is corrupted, so, I get him, so I'm getting one additional power charge. Overall, this helmet is one of the best uh, helmet that you can get. So absolutely do not skip on this item. And the auras that I'm keeping in my helmet is Herald of Ice, Discipline, Determination, and have an enlightened level three. Since um, the, the helmet gives you plus two socket, socketed gems, this makes the enlightened uh, goes from three to five. This really helps me out with like, you know, reservation and other auras. So for my body armor that I'm using, I'm using Chavron's wrapping and the colors that you would ha like to have is three greens, two blues, one red. And I'm using Cyclone, Custom Crit, before you start panicking because you're seeing Awakened Castle Crit, go back to the belt section. There's some explanations over there for you. Then I'm using Added Cold Damage, Inspiration, Crit, crit Strikes, Vortex. On the note of the, on the Vortex, you wanna use the special uh, Vortex from the lab, Vortex of Projection. I think that's how you pronounce it properly. Because then the Vortex can expand from up to five um, Frost balls, and that's and, and the frost balls are triggered from your cosplay. Not only that, you can uh, replace the vortex of the projection for ice nova of frost balls, and that's very important that you have to get the ice nova of the frost balls. And both of them feel, um, you know, quite good. That pretty much the same playstyle as they are like, involved, like a, a nova spell, um, and they are still called since your ability is very general custom crit build you can swap around with them 
Um, you're probably gonna be wondering which ones are, well, you know, which is better, the Vortex or, or the Ice Nova. I play around a little bit with both of them, I would say, you know, they feel quite good. At, at this point, pretty much pick whatever you want. If you just wanna go by the numbers, the POB says the Vortex is, um, gives you much, much higher damage. But, you know, if you enjoy the Ice Nova, why not? Now, the gloves that I'm using, I'm using a very standard rare pair of gloves because uh, I want, because there's two um, in place that I wanted to have. One is the exposure, and second, the second one's on nerve. Now, the the main priorities in the gloves is this: you would you would want to have as much as dexterity on your gloves uh, as you can, because this is just gonna relax and um, getting the dexterity on other pieces. Then you wanna get as much of you know energy shield as as you can and then you would like to have an open suffix so you can um, craft yourself grand fairy level aspect of the spider yes you can get level 30 not 20 with the new um, beast crafting if you buy yourself a beast call it black moringa now if you get yourself an open suffix just like me you can get yourself a little bit crit chance or you can craft yourself resistance if you're missing some so there's like you know a little bit of flexibility but you want to get yourself the black morrigan uh, beast so you can craft with the as aspect of the spider because the aspect the level 30 can have one additional web on the enemies and this gives you like quite chunk of a lot of damage i would say now and the skills that you're going to be keeping in your gloves is going to be automation steel skin precision and I'm keeping clarity level one simply because I have a watch SI with the clarity mode. If you don't have the same watch SI as me, then you can actually skip the clarity and you have a one free socket so you can play around um, with, with this. Now, on the note of um, crafting yourself the aspect of the spider, you have to have those uh, set up on the gems over here. Do not swap your setup from the boots to your gloves because the inspiration uh, will add more reservation uh, to your aspect. So just make sure that the gems, the, the, those four gems are exactly in your gloves. And the boots that I'm using in the build are stampedes. They are pretty much great. You don't need to know too much about the stampedes. Pretty much the, the only thing that you need to know, you have to buy them. And the only stats that you should be looking for is the increased cooldown recovery rate of travel skills you want to get this as high as you can without bringing you know breaking the bank so that's pretty much it and the the anointment that you're going to be doing is the essence sap this is going to give you some mana leech when you're going to be cycloning because otherwise you will run out of the mana very quickly and um, the links that you're going to be keeping in your boots is inspiration mark mark on hit assassin's mark you don't need the quality you can have it why not but you don't need it and then you're gonna have a frost blink make sure that this setup is 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 actually in the boots do not swap this setup with your gloves because what's gonna happen when you add inspiration to your gloves and you're gonna have an aspect of the spider you're just gonna add extra reservation um, for mana on the aspect of the spider. That's why this setup of the gems is in the boots. And the amulet that I'm using, I'm using Presence of Chayula. This is a very important slot as well. There's a lot of things happening over here. Since we, in the with the Presence of Chayula, we cannot be stunned. And this really helps with the Cyclone playstyle a lot. And then you're gonna be applying yourself um, anointment for Tranquility. It's gonna give you a little bit extra damage then you can use um, defense catalyst to convert a little bit more of the maximum life converted to energy shield because generally the amulet only have 20 percent but if you add 20 catalyst this goes to 24 percent and overall this amulet is great for the build so the ring that i'm using currently is gonna be a little bit different that you what you're gonna see in the pob because you know i was lucky with the craft and you know i don't expect people to you know to literally have the same luck or buy the same ring because they might not be available on the market so you're gonna have a different magic ring let me explain so i have 
uh, a ring that has a base chaos resistance and I have another chaos resistance and I have a non-channeling for the for the prefix. For you, uh, in the POB, you're not gonna see the double chaos resistance, you're just gonna see chaos resistance, dexterity and non-channeling. Here's why. I was quite lucky when I was spamming this ring and I got a T1 strength and a T1 dexterity. That's why I don't need the dexterity in this ring since I have it over here so I can get a little bit more chaos resistance over here. And how I created this ring is simply I got myself a redeemer base um, amethyst ring with the chaos resistance then you go to the harvest as long as you have some blue juice then you just spam caster because caster gonna force um, actually the the cures that you're looking for once you fo force the cures you're trying to get something decent like you know resistance stats and so on whatever you can get that's what i'm saying i was quite lucky with this ring because it's actually very good so probably someone's gonna be wondering can you upgrade this build from this stage yes but there is like a minor things that you can do that's gonna be very expensive like awaken custom crit you know you can apply enchantment maybe on your cost priest there's like a very small minor upgrades that you can do unfortunately you're gonna get hit hit a wall when you have to put the mage blood and then on top of the whatever the mage blood cost you're gonna have to put another 100 to 150 divines just to get the build um, on the highest trigger rate so be warned that the upgrading this build from this stage is pro probably gonna be very difficult. So how did I level up my character? If you're wondering, I did respect my original character because I started this league as a Arakali Fang. The video, you can find this, uh, the video in the description, there's gonna be somewhere below a link and you can find a POB over there as well. So at this point of the video, thank you for watching and I will see you later in my next video.